uh, here's the deal, guys. I was a bartender in New York City uh, for like six years. Mostly I was at a bartender at this Irish pub, and um, I'm here to tell you that there are a couple rules uh, that you learn to live by as a bartender. Uh, number one, don't get drunk behind the bar. That makes sense, right? You can have a couple Jamesons, you can have a couple beers, but don't ever appear drunk. Number two, do not have sex with patrons. Have secret sex with patrons. Very important. And uh, number three, don't have uh, sexual fantasies about married coworkers. That one's for me personally, okay? Uh, <laughs> I was uh, one of a trio of bartenders in New York. There was me, I was the only chick. There was Mickey, he was the off-the-boat Irishman. Uh, he was charming, the ladies loved him. He had that wonderful accent where he sounds like he's about to spout poetry at any second. And then there was Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy was uh, your typical New York City bartender. He was angry. He was moody. He had a master's in Marxist theory. <laughs> um, <laughs> you get it. You get it. Uh, and he was also so handsome, but he was also so married. And see, here's the thing. I uh, believe in the bonds of marriage. I wasn't going to try anything, and I'm pretty sure I wasn't going to let him try anything. Uh, but, you know, it never stops you from admiring a really cute butt when it gets behind the bar, right? So about six months into me working there, uh, Jimmy goes back. He grabs a coffee, comes back behind the bar, gives me a kiss on the cheek like he always does. And he goes, hey, kid, how is it going today? And I look him in the eye and then immediately look down on the floor because it's dawned on me that I've just had the dirtiest sex dream about Jimmy the night before. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing. My uh, brain likes to play a little trick on me. It likes to have dreams of a sexual nature about people that I have in my life. And then it doesn't like to tell me it's done it until I'm looking them in the eye the next day. <laughs> so here's what happens. I look Jimmy in the eye and I look down because here's what's going on in my brain. It's a late night at the bar. It's been busy. Jimmy says, hey, kid, grab two Amstel lights because that's, that's Jimmy's favorite beer. We sit down and start talking. He goes, hey come on down to the keg room. I have something I want to show you. We go down the stairs. We get into the keg room. I go, brr, it's cold in here. <laughs> and then he pushes me up against the wall, and he says, I'll get you warm, and then we boink like bunnies. All right? It's great. Uh, but I proceed to not be able to look Jimmy in the eye for the next, like, day and a half because I've had this dream about him. The thing with me and dreams is kind of how I feel about men. I get bored pretty quickly. And so usually after about a week and a half or so, uh, the dream kind of goes away. Except that I see Jimmy all the time. And Jimmy's always behind the bar, and his butt looks good in jeans, guys. So I kind of, if I'm being honest, I keep this dream sort of on, let's call it rotation, OK? It gets cold. It gets lonely in New York. You got to have your go-tos, right? Fast forward four years. Jim and I have been bartenders next to each other for four years. He's my brother. There's no attraction. He's just gotten married. He's just had a kid. It's, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. We are the soldiers against the war of the drunkards in New York, okay? It's sweet. It's great. But I'm still having this dream once in a while because it's fun. <laughs> One night. It's a busy night at Ryan's. It's a Friday night. We uh, finish up the bar, and he goes, hey, kid, grab two beers. And I grab two Amstel Lights, because now they're my favorite beers. <laughs> and uh, we sit down, and we start talking. And he goes, hey, kid, while I have you, come on down to the keg room. I have something I want to show you. <laughs> you guys, it took me like two steps to think that, oh, my god. I am a sex psychic. I am a magician. I can make my sexual fantasies come true, okay? So we start going down the stairs, and I'm going through the list in my head. You know what I'm talking about? Did I shave last night? Am I ready for this? And we get down the stairs, and I'm going with script. So I go, burr, it's cold in here. <laughs> and Jim says, yeah, Kim, it's a refrigerated keg room. It's going to be cold in here. And I kind of push myself up against the wall because I am ready for this. This is going to happen. And Jim says, Kim, look, come here. I changed the topper on the Guinness because I know that keg's hard for you to change, and I was trying to help you out. <laughs> and I went, thanks, buddy. <laughs> and I run up the stairs, <laughs> never to speak about it again. Um, just a little side note. Uh, I've told this story before at the Moth, and Jim watched it. 
And uh, <laughs> Jimmy was like, did you have to? Like, is that really? And it's like, well, you know, it gets cold and it gets lonely in New York. I don't know why I need to explain this to you. The most important thing you guys need to remember, though, the most important thing that I want to leave you with is not that I had a sex dream. It's not that, uh, you know, all bartenders are secretly sleeping with their customers and just not telling you. It's this. I told you that I have sex dreams about people that I've met in real life. So thank you. <laughs> to all of you. It's been great. Thanks so much. Thanks, you guys. I'm Kim Galish. Kim Kalish, ladies and gentlemen.